This is day three of the Jan Gameshi trial, complainant number two, and I have to tell you, I've never seen a law and order episode come to life as this one did today. We all just left the courtroom a few minutes ago in suspense. Marie Hannon was cross-examining Lucy Ducouture, the trailer park actress who is the second complainant in this case. She alleges basically that in uh, July of 2003, after having dinner together, going back to Mr. Gameshi's home, he, uh, uh, they, they, they kissed, he kissed her, shoved her hard against a wall. A hand like this in her throat so that she couldn't breathe, and then slapped her twice in the face, looked at her sort of in the eye, and slapped her a third time. So that's, that's, those are the allegations, choking and sexual assault. And uh, du Couture is a really impressive woman. She's the trailer park boys actress. She's a producer. She's a uh, captain in the Royal Canadian Air Force Reserves. Uh, and she's a pretty pulled together person, a lot more sophisticated than the first complainant. And the allegations are very serious. And um, however, as compelling and sort of a real wake-up call for for women I think as a woman sitting there I felt you know that this was a woman who really understands women in some ways because a lot of women are kind of natural pleasers and we want to kind of calm things down and we don't want conflict and I mean it's ridiculous as Lucy de Couture herself said of her own conduct it's ridiculous and for that reason she said even though Gameshi had allegedly slapped her and choked her. She, re she spent the rest of a weekend with him. She wasn't staying with him. They didn't have sexual relations or anything. But they went to dinner, to barbecues, to an art show. I find this a bit confusing because I can see wanting to placate somebody who has physically hurt you long enough to leave gracefully and safely, but I don't see seeing him again. Anyway, all that said, she was very believable this morning. This afternoon, Marie Hannon, uh, Gameshi's lead lawyer, starts her cross-examination. Among the many things she puts to her are emails that Ducouture sent to some of her friends in the fall of uh, 2014, which is when this whole story broke, when the police charges were laid, etc. Some of the things she wrote that she wanted to see Gameshi, in her words, fucking decimated. She said, uh, she described him as a shit show and it's time to flush. This from a woman who in the morning portrayed herself as having a lot of compassion even now for Gameshi because he's the kind of guy who you know needs to do that who gets some sort of charge out of it so it's a very it's a bewildering story you have this really together woman uh, telling a really compelling story and it turns out she's communicating with another complainant it sounds as though they're delighting in his, in Gameshi's criminal charges. Maybe that's normal, I don't know, but Ducature had her own lawyer through, from the get-go, as she admitted, and you would think the lawyer would have clued her in a little bit better about the perils of saying anything on email and the nature of disclosure obligations. Prosecutors are required to disclose every iota of information they get. We learned this is what led to this climactic finish Marie Hannon says on Tuesday this week, when the first complainant was just finishing up in the stand, and she had had emails put to her that she'd sent to Mr. Gameshi after he allegedly attacked her, Lucy de Couture's lawyer writes the Crown Attorney and says, hey, if there was information about post-assault conduct, would you like to, or contact, would you be interested in knowing about it? Now what that means is, or what it suggests of, it means is that after this weekend in Toronto, Du Couture admits she stayed chatty and reasonably socially friendly with Gameshi, but there was nothing more. And now we've seen pictures of them in that weekend in the park. She, she is, honest to God, she's gazing adoringly at him at one point uh, as he sits, uh, as they sit in a park, Riverdale Park, she thinks. Um, the guy who, the night before, choked her and slapped her hard across the face three times and she's 
looking at him adoringly. Uh, I mean, it's confusing. It really is bewildering to me, the whole thing. Um, but it looks as though, it sounds as though Marie Hannon has either, the Crown is obliged to give them disclosure. So she's either got disclosure that shows that Lucy Ducouter, you know, realized too late that this might happen to her too, having seen it happen to the first witness. And she's telling her lawyer, we better come clean, in essence, with the Crown. We better tell the Crown about this stuff. The question is, is there more stuff? Or is it just the late admission of some of these emails where she wants Mr. Gameshi decimated, etc.? I don't know. Marie Hennon took us up to 426 and then said, I think I'll finish tomorrow, Your Honor. Oh my God. Anyway, bewildering day to be a, a woman sitting in that courtroom. Probably a bewildering day for a man to be sitting in it too. Don't know what to make of it.